fun. We're just going to be going over this, though. Uh, let's mute this, too. Okay, so first thing to note, we're playing Vera Shen versus Zaya and Alistar. So, the primary strength of Varus is his level 6 all-in and his early trading, especially at level 1. Pretty much no champion in the game can out-trade Varus at level 1 because he'll auto-E, which then slows you, right? And then he'll auto-you again. So that's what we're primarily going to be focusing on when the laning phase collides. And a big thing to note, too, is just Alistar. Playing around Alistar combos when he can combo, when he can't combo, and just trying to get harassing in the early stages. I've never watched this game or anything like that, so we're just going to be diving in on it. I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit because I don't really want to see where he's spotting. Diamond EU West. Okay, so it's a Diamond EU West game. I'm going to be going over Varus. So first thing to note already is, is that they leashed and they didn't. So things to note about this, right? You're getting pushed in, and you can get ganked at level f uh, at three minutes. So these are things that we're looking for in the early stages. So at the start, for the most part, this is good. He's just last hitting as much as he can, making sure he's not leaving himself vulnerable at all. Now things to note too is, is you do want to get your E cooldown off as much as possible. So we'll actually start tackling bit, like sp uh, where he's standing and what's going wrong already in this lane. So as the next wave crashes and he has the wave safely on this side, he should actually be cutting out right here. And the reason for that is, is he has all his minions here and Alistar is all the way really far back. Remember what I was talking about before where Alistar can't pressure that much at level 1. So the AD carry in this point should be cutting up right here and looking for an auto E auto and trading on that immediately. He should just be constantly readjusting his positioning to where his support is matching their support and so he's matching their AD carry. This way he's avoiding any ways for the... A for the Alistar to get combos on him without running through his support and taking damage that way. So that's already an immediate problem is, is there's basically no pressure in this landing phase at the early start. So now we're just trading farm and we've actually missed one of our most important opportunities which is at level 1 to do trading. So levels W, level 2, that's awesome. Things to note, always, always, always want to auto E auto. So we still, two and a half minutes into the game, haven't used our E yet at all to pressure at all. So this is good. Just always make sure that you're auto attacking and pushing out the wave. And he just needs to make sure that he's constantly shifting positions so that his support matches their support. Because if the Alistar walks up, then he either has to combo the Shen or walk through the Shen, which then causes the guy to take a lot of damage. I'm probably going to spend a decent amount of the time kind of tackling the landing phase issues that are happening in this game. But positives to look at already, though, is that he is CSing extremely well. He's only missed like one or two minions total. So that is a really good thing that he's having, having happen in his landing phase. Constantly playing around the Alistar pressure. And he should just be constantly, remember, just shifting where he's standing to wherever the Alistar isn't. That way he can take one-on-one -on -one trades with the AD carry and create pressure in this lane. Now that the feathers actually missed, you actually should actually shift up right here and start hitting the AD carry. Because there's no feathers in that sense. A lot of Zaya's early game damage is tied to his E and being able to root you. Also another thing to note... Anytime that you're standing within this vicinity right here, you should just hit every player that's stepping up and walking up because if the Alistar does combo on you right in this area right here, so we'll just create like an imaginary circle, then he re he leaves himself to get taunted and pulled under the turret. So he actually can't combo the Varus in any vicinity right here. So she he should be hammering the uh, Alistar every time he walks up right to this area. So at this point in time, hasn't seen the jungler pretty much the whole game, right? So at any point in time, he could get ganked. So when that when this wave gets cleared right here, before this second wave crashes, he should definitely walk over and ward try. Because at four minutes, the jungler can be anywhere. He hasn't seen the jungler anywhere. And so he doesn't know what his route is. So having a ward behind the try so that you don't get ganked from behind is really important. Plus then, if you have that ward there with your jungler in the bot side, you can kind of navigate how to fight 3v3. So he is poking at least a decent amount. 
and playing around his bonus movement speed, which is actually another thing to tackle is, is just always, always, always want to play around your bonus movement speed. So next thing to tackle is trading in all ins. So in this case, he starts trading. See, this is the position that you always want as an AD carry is you want this support zoned out where your AD carry is trading with AD carry and the support is fighting the support. That way he can CC the Alistar if he comes in. So the trade happens, right? And the taunt happens. So at this point in time, Alistar has used his combo and you don't have any feathers on you and he's ramping up his stun. You don't want to actually step this far back. This is too far back already. You should actually be surging forward and moving to the right. And the reason for that is, is the AD carry is already low on HP. And if you search to the right, you're avoiding all the feathers that are already preset. And then one of two things happens, okay? Alistar shifts forward and hits you with a stun, which leaves him exposed and he takes a bunch more damage. Or Alistar starts cutting backwards, which is what happens here. And then he uses the stun on either you or the support. If the AD carry reinforces at 50% already, then you can just continue to surge forward and hit him. And then he'll either have to die or lose a lot of HP. And then eventually either this guy overcommits too hard and you'd kill him, or he has to back off and then you have this whole long lane to work with to just hammer in the AD, uh, hammer in the Alistar. Stepping back like this actually ruined, ruined a really, really potentially lane winning trade in that sense. Especially because the combo happened at the same time Shen Taunt happened. So most of the damage, most of the utility function that Alistar has is already gone. That being said too, also if he's paying attention to where the Shen Dagger is, he never gets stunned by the Alistar uh, E because Shen can just use uh, his W, which blocks the auto attack and then stops the stun. Also, another thing to note, when is he using Qs? Oh, okay, he used it to last hit. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. So I don't think Vera should be struggling too much in mana if he's not using his Q too frequently. Should pretty much only use it to pop stacks. I guess the last hitting is not a big deal. But it does put some mana constraints on you for sure. He didn't step up because the TF was roaming. Uh, TF gold card doesn't matter in this game. Because same thing, Spirit's Refuge blocks the gold card. So after the combo is down, he, he can't get gold carded. So there's no reason to respect the Twisted Fate uh, roam at that point in time. Alright, so at this point in time, we're just landing again. Perfect, he's always getting auto attacks in whenever he can for the support. And just constantly keeping his wave on this side. Now at this point in time, it's a pretty good chance that the AD carry is actually resetting. Okay, never mind, he's not resetting. Don't need to talk about that. He showed like a lot earlier than I thought he would. Remember, anytime Anytime that you're in this circle right here, Alistar can't combo on you, and feathers are used. So the second this guy walks forward and feathers are used, you should just step forward and challenge on this AD carry. If the Alistar combos back here, then he's going to get taunted under the turret and die. So there's actually a bit too much respect for the Alistar combo. Alistar combo only really matters in this matchup if you get comboed, then three feathers get put on you and a root gets ripped, especially pre-first back. Because really, Zaya does not do that much damage in pre-first back. Until she gets her BF sword, she's actually pretty weak. All right, so you're hitting whoever you can. You're cutting backwards. Kind of auto attacked a ranged minion. That's okay. Good flash. At this point in time, you should actually be hitting the Jarvan, not the AD carry. <sighs> All right, so let's tackle this whole scenario after it's kind of erupted as it's going on. Okay. So things to look out for when you're having a skirmish like this. Okay. So. They start ganking you, you're kiting backwards, you're missing some damage by not actually fully auto attacking on the cusp, 
Especially because Alistair has already used his W, so you should have been kiting out and just hitting a lot closer to them. But this is okay, you're still auto-attacking. You kind of put an auto-attack into the minions, that's not too big of a deal. And we're actually wasting our flash for a kill right here. This player is already dead, you never need to flash for this. And this is actually a lot more important later. Flashing for kills when you're having a big skirmish like this, especially since Twisted Fate is off the map and can TP to your fight, is really problematic. But at this point in time, you're hitting the AD carry. Cool, you get the AD carry's flash. At this point in time, you kite around the circle. You want to be kiting around the circle like this, so you're not getting slowed the whole time. And then you can actually play with this space right here, and you're not slowed. Because now you have no flash. You're really low on HP. And you could die in that situation, right? So now you're kiting backwards. This is pretty good still. I like who you're hitting. You shouldn't. You should not, and this is why the flash is actually really important to you. You shouldn't be giving up ground to hit this player. Your teammate is not going to die. This guy is completely out of mana right now. If you don't kite backwards like this, you actually just completely missed a kill right here. So pay attention to when your Shen is taunting, especially because e the most important thing in this situation too is cooldowns. So when the Jarvan uses EQ, that means that all the damage you deal to him and walk up to deal is going to stick a lot harder. That being said too, remember that you also force the heal and flash out of the AD carry. So the only reinforcing location, uh, reinforcing champion can't actually do that much damage to you while you're standing right here and standing next to your Shen. So things to take away from that, don't waste flash to get a kill when you're in a huge skirmish. If you're just flashing to get a kill because that's already dead right and you're already a part of a bigger skirmish so in that case like twisted fate was probably going to come down and there were still two other people alive don't don't make a good habit of that that's really not worth it also another thing too pay attention to mana bars mana bars in the vicinity are a really important indicator of whether or not uh a player like your like your sejuani in this case was in threat of getting killed And then also try to make a habit of when you're using things like stopwatch and flash, make sure that the skill shot is in the air before you use it. That way you can use your stopwatch effectively. Because now at this point in time, be between your stopwatch and your wasted flash, you're actually just losing a lot of farm and potentially ruining your ability to impact team fights a little bit. Good ultimate, good good conservative use though. I like that you're not spamming spells when you're kind of low on mana, and that was a really good ultimate to get a kill. But at this point in time, you definitely want to stay. This is the correct play. Catch this last wave, but then you want to reset afterwards because you need items really badly. Perfect. Good job resetting. And I'm going to skip through this a little bit. Buy two pieces of Ginsu's. Excellent. So you're also buying the Ninja Tabby. Um, one thing to note, actually, though, I'd probably just not bother with the Blasting one and just sit on the gold. So for this buy path, because Varus doesn't really get too much AP ratios, it's different on Kogma, who gets really nice AP ratios. You should just complete your Ninja Tabby because the Jungler is an auto attacker. Twisted Fate to a lesser extent is an auto attacker, and you're laning against an AD carry. So this will this will unlock you a little bit better. So kind of a nitpicky thing, but you should definitely have been buying a Ninja Tabby completed here instead of getting the blasting one, and then you should have gotten like a pink ward or a refillable potion as a secondary part of it. All right, now we're back into lane. Nay, Ricola, thank you for the subscription. Welcome back, two months in a row, and welcome back to Low Elo. Appreciate the support. All right, so we're just landing right now. We now see that the jungler is on that side. Feathers have been ripped. So at this point in time, you should be stepping out to get wards. This is what you should be doing. 
Like you can use your trinket ward there. That way your teammate can ward a little bit later in that sense. Once you get the push advantage. Good, good. Just try to always get harassed on the Alistar whenever you can. This is super good. You're avoiding the Twisted Fate gank. The Twisted Fate gank has happened on the other side of the map though now. So you should actually start pushing forward and hitting this Alistar as much as possible. Try not to use your E until you've gotten a lot of stacks on someone too. Because that's just a lot more percentage damage. You want to get as many stacks, up to three obviously. And then you can get your things. Alright, so let's tackle let's tackle what happens in this fight. And this is also why I'm a big advocate of getting the ninja tabby first, just to prevent scenarios like this from happening. So let's start with let's start with Varus as a champion, right? You get up to three stacks and then you pop it and it does percent health damage. So in situations where it doesn't it looks like you can get more than one auto attack, which is I feel like a very obvious thing in this situation. Just don't use your E or your Q until you've gotten at least two or three auto attacks synced into them. This actually makes a pretty big difference in this trade because of how much damage you miss. Alright, so you've won the trade at this point in time, right? You've won the trade. Like, they're extremely low on HP. At this point in time, you just kite down to the left. And when the Alistar starts walking up to you, you should just use your ultimate on him. Now, the reason for that is it'll root him, and a lot of times... A lot of times it happens with uh, Alistars. It's the same thing when Rise happens. If you're in range for a combo and you get rooted, a lot of times actually people not trolling you will fuck up and just pull up on the ground. Try to do a combo and then pull up the ground. Also by doing that, you'll also force the ultimate and allow yourself to disengage and it'll give you the space you need to not get comboed anymore. Because what ends up happening here is you joust back and forth between this and then you get comboed. So in this situation, remember, he's super low on HP. Just use your ultimate to space him out. Like, I do realize that this taunt miss, and that is on his fault, but you see this taunt miss, and then you juke back into it, and you don't use your ultimate on the Alistar to buy you the space to step away. Because at this point in time, you're just toast, right? Like, you're kind of too deep. You've already used most of your cooldowns, and they're able to DPS you down. So, things to take from that that skirmish make sure you use stacking as much as you can before you're using your e and q to reset uh if the player is low throw out your ultimate early just to use it as a zoning tool to force him to ultimate and give yourself space and then make sure you're not double backing back and forth like that to get comboed on also another thing too blasting one's useless just finish your ninja tabby first I think in the situation where you finish the ninja tabby you actually might have been spared your life in that situation because it would have mitigated a lot of damage all right, so at this point in time, we're out of landing phase, right? You've gotten two kills. Your Ginsu's is finished. Perfect. So you now see that the dual lane is top lane right now, okay? And you see a fight happening mid. You're already fucking up. So let's look at what dragon this is. This is an air dragon. So this, no go. Don't waste. Don't waste your time going for this dragon. This is a waste of time. So instead... When people switch lanes, you're actually given a god-given grace too. So they switch lanes, right? The AD carry is top lane, and a fight's broken out, and the Twisted Fate is dead, right? Green Swizzle. Um, so instead of going to this dragon or this mid lane, you should just be pushing out bottom and trying to get this turret. Then once someone shows, because you've actually gotten kills here too, right? You can swing up and around and potentially do this turret. So this is a waste of your time. This is actually putting you a lot farther behind than you think. This is just a waste of time. If this is if this is a fire dragon or maybe even an ocean dragon, I can kind of see where you're coming from, but Air Drake, this is just a colossal waste of your time and actually just chunks you out substantially low. And, and since you had kills in mid lane, you basically got nothing out of that. Another thing too, try to pay attention to the fruit. There was actually fruit right here you could have just picked up and gotten. So now, let's look at the circumstances you've created by doing this dragon, right? You didn't utilize the bot wave. 
you've lost you've now lost top turret right you haven't traded turrets and you're 50 percent health so now what happens is is look your shen has to basically stand here and babysit you instead of doing something on the map okay so this is super bad too when your teammates die somewhere on the map with a numbers disadvantage that means those numbers look at this that means their numbers can't be bottom so you should push out this next wave you should 100 percent push out this next wave your support is standing right next to you he has shen ultimate you're missing out on a lot of farm already you've probably potentially missed about 20 to 30 cs just by not lane assigning yourself correctly and staying in lanes longer when it makes sense because at this point in time this doesn't matter what matters is, is pushing out all the waves and pressuring. Okay, so let's tackle the next part, right? So since we've kind of fucked up on our lane assignments, you arrive at a team fight, right? You're using E to clear the wave. I totally understand that. It makes sense. You ult E. It doesn't hit the mark, but I understand what you're aiming at, and this is actually really good that you were aiming at the AD carry. So at this point in time, you've hit the you've hit the, you've hit this guy, right? He's not ulting, nothing's happening. You should be scooting back and just DPSing on the outskirts because you want to be as far away from them as possible. Plus, your ultimate creates, as you can see from the circle, a zoning situation where they have to basically give ground for the next couple of seconds. So you just want to cut backwards and just DPS this. This is already a fucked fight. Your Nidalee is dead. Your Zillion just died, right? And it doesn't even look like you're you're not even fighting with your Sejuani, right? And there's four people up here. So you're DPSing him. You weren't able to get the kill. That's okay. So let's target. Let's tackle an issue that we've seen uh, pretty asymptomatic symptomatic now from when you stop watching bot lane. You're flashing nothing. So in this situation, right, you get gold carded. You get gold carded. You don't flash unless an EQ comes at you. 100%. You want to be flashing skill shots. You want to be flashing. The things that are important not just flashing to just get gain distance in this gold card situation if you just stand here and dps him instead of flashing out and you hold your flash and you're just actively paying attention you can flash the eq you can flash a potential combo and completely flip this on its head this is a wasted flash and it's really not that important in terms of nitpickiness but it's mostly uh, a problem i'm seeing with your play in the sense that you use your shit before something is actively coming at you that you need to avoid so that's definitely something to work on in the future. Because right now, you should have flash. You should have flash for this situation. And it's just a good habit in general. Okay, so this guy TP's in. And you just let him walk past you. That's kind of weird. Alright, so good E to slow him down. Excellent. Alright, don't do this. At the second the fight is won, get back to that lane and get pushing the pressure. So now you've killed three people, right? The second those people ha those people die, second those people die, you need to just walk back up and go for this turret. Not spend three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. See what I'm saying? Like this is. It's almost 30 seconds that you're not pushing this out and getting an objective. Your team doesn't need your help to get this Rift Herald. There's not people on the map to stop them. You should have just been pushing the whole time. Because then you could have gotten it to the turret. You probably could have gotten turret damage. Maybe if they lane assign incorrectly, you can even get the turret. A lot of why I'm hammering this down is just to make sure that you're always actively farming when it makes sense. Because that's what's the difference between really high elo players and just medium elo players. You should have about 160 to 180 CS right now. And on a roll like 80 carry, it's really important to be making sure that you're generating as much gold as possible. Since your relative strength is how much income you have and how quickly you can get to items. You, and... Based on how the Elena signed, by the way, because the Zaya was so late, you had 100% gotten that turret. So that's another 250 gold that was kind of thrown away.
Alright, so awesome your teammates helped you. You did a good job not playing too far up for when Alistar was moving. And now you're pushing out this wave, right? Using the Rift Herald. Oh, here's another compounding thing, right? Because you weren't pushing this out the whole time and didn't get the turret by yourself, now your team is wasting the Rift Herald on their first turret top instead of potentially grouping middle and using the Rift Herald mid. So that's like another turret that's kind of just thrown away as a consequence of not... Uh, like, of not, like, pushing out the waves fully and getting pressure on the turret when you've made kills. A good way to identify this is the second you've killed people, ask yourself this. What can I get and do I need to help? Those are the two questions you should ask yourself. What can I get and do I need to help? So, first question, do I need to help for the Rift Herald, right? Answer is no. There's three people dead. Rift Herald is mostly tied to the eye damage. So that's why people can solo it, right? So in that situation, no, you don't need to help that because no one's going to come contest it. So you should just push out top and farm it. So then, you know, what, the things that you could get, right? You could get top farm and top turret or the Rift Herald. So do I need to help with Rift Herald? No, people are dead. No one's going to contest it. So boom, your second answer is how you figure that first one out, which is, all right, I can get the top farm and top wave. And a lot of times in the mid game, I just recommend that you relegate yourself to mid lane because it's the safest lane to just farm. This is a little bit greedy to take all of the camps from your jungle. I think this is kind of fucked up. But not too bad. You're approaching two item. You're super strong. You're super fed. This is like this is your game to carry. Like despite like kind of missing some minute things that could have put you a little bit farther ahead, this is still your game to carry. At this point in time, especially because you have a zillion to protect you too. Okay. So let's tackle what your champions do and what can happen to you. Okay? So we'll look at the map as you enter the waves mid lane. Zaya's top lane, Gangplank's, Gangplank's bottom. This is at maximum a 3v3. Okay? So on Varus, a lot of times, it's, it's kind of your job to engage a lot of fights. Especially with champions like Zillion and Shen. But this is great because you have a Zillion to save you and a Zillion and Shen to both CC on top of your CC. So the second this wave crashes, you should not give any ground at all. There's no there's no world where you should give ground. You should surge forward. And if anyone contests you, you just boom. You hit him with the Varus ultimate and that guy's toast. And since you know where people are, you're not going to fight at a numbers disadvantage. And on top of that, you have a zillion ult to bail you out if they all pile on you and you can flip the fight that way. Because letting these players clear this wave with where everyone is on the map is just not, it, it's not good. This is, this is a really huge missed opportunity for you to pressure the map. All right, so at this point in time, we've got like, what, 30 or 45 seconds on Dragon. They're pressuring bottom, so you shouldn't even be walking up right here at this point in time, just mostly clearing waves and kind of preventing them from getting any objectives. This is a good rotation. I like that you ping also so that people will come over to you. At this point in time, you're, it should just be damage control, so you just you should actually be winding up a Q and shooting it there. there. All right, so you just hit an Alistar. This is bad. So on champions that are really tanky and have ways to break your ultimate, if no one is hitting you besides this Alistar, you do not need to use Varus ultimate. This is this is unnecessary and it's a waste of it's a waste of your resources. He's already gonna have to ulti to dodge other damage. Imagine if you had Varus ultimate for any of these players right now. It would be so good for your team fight. All right, so Sedge alt hits. Excellent. You did play aggressive in that team fight, though. Outside of the ultimate, you played that team fight pretty well. You were safe, conservative, and DPS to whoever was in front of you. So, next question, right? What can I get and do I need to help? Perfect. I can get mid lane turret. I don't need to help with the top lane kill, and Baron's not up yet. So let's just go for let's just go for this turret. That is awesome. Good way. Good team fighting. Just. Be a little bit more conservative on your ultimate. If people aren't in the vicinity to 
power down on you with the Alistar, don't use your ultimate on Alistar. Just slow him and just keep auto attacking him. So I like I like this a little bit, but it's a little bit risky because everyone is resing right now to do the dragon. I'm glad that you have some emphasis on objectives, but it's a little bit risky to go for that for sure while your jungler is not there too. Alright, so you're able to collapse on him. Perfect, perfect. TF ult doesn't reach that far. Just grab the wave. Super good. And you're getting super strong. This is your game to carry. Like I said, you're already fucking massive. You're 4-1-6. and six. You are so strong. This is an easy game for you to carry. So now you're going for the objective. Let's make sure that you don't spam any spells too early. So we see Jarvan over on the right. That Jarvan should already be dead. That Jarvan should have already been dead. He should have gotten instantly ultied and died. Alright, not bad. So now you're killing the Twisted Fate. Perfect. Everyone's dead. Now it's just Alistar in front of you. Perfect. You're just hitting whoever's in front of you. I like this. You have your ultimate up now, by the way. So you can use it on anyone that comes in. Solid. What can I get? Do I need to help? Ooh, really good ultimate onto the AD carry. Solid. And now you're just DPSing whoever's in front of you. So at this point in time, you can just get this mid lane turret. And if you're paying attention to the bot wave, it's pushing it at the same time. So you have options to rotate after you get this turret. Especially with how long the super carries are dead in this situation. In this case, though, since you're at 3,500 gold, I'd actually recommend you just spam ping your teammates off and just reset. Because if you do go for top turret and you get stuck in a long fight, then you'll not have mana to contest Baron if they rush Baron. Alright, we're killing... We're, the enemy team just running into you. The enemy team is literally just feeding their brains off to you. Alright, so since two people are dead, you no longer have to worry about Baron is an op option, even if you're low on resources. So, awesome, you get the turret. At this point in time, you swing down and you do Baron. Wow, okay. That's a little bit wild. I'd have actually done Baron after I won this team fight right here and got Alistar Flash. I would have gone to Baron. But, okay, perfect. Everything's going great. Oh, God, there's 14 more minutes of this game, though. What the hell happened? Okay, so, let's see. So, you buy the Wits End. Makes sense, right? And then you buy a full blade of the Ruin King. Hmm. It's not terrible, but I'm not crazy about it. And the reason for that is, is I'd much rather just have you have a PD uh, so that you can duel anyone that's on you. Since you're already so strong, it's just a super valuable item in that sense. And it'll get you a lot better uh, attack speed. Plus, it'll crit. And I really like crit. Once you start scaling into the later stages of the game on Varus. Alright, so you have Baron. Just ping your teammates. Come help me. And you just group mid and you just tear down turrets now. Okay, you're pinging for the bot lane. I think that's fine. So at this point in time, what you want to do is... You always want to have mid push before you rotate to bottom. This is like kind of a little bit higher level stuff. But you always want to clear this wave middle before you rotate bottom. That way you clear it and it's here and someone has to respond to it before you start pushing out bottom. Because what you've actually done right now is you've actually given your opponents a chance to clear this wave and then all five group over here instead of having someone have to respond to this. So it's a good habit to have. Plus if uh, the opponents are actually really good, a lot of times by doing this, this is actually too slow and they just push down mid and then take your middle inhibitor. And then when you have Baron, you find yourself trading turrets and, and uh, inhibitors and that's not a good thing. Don't get distracted with people on the sides. Just make sure that you're getting the objectives. And if your teammates are zoning them, just let them continue to zone. Things to note in this team fight: you do not have flash. So it's very important that you do not get jumped on and killed instantly if your teammates can't help you. But you do have Zillion Ultimate. So this next wave, you should probably just walk up, root anyone that challenges you, and just kill that guy. Okay, you're walking up. You're hitting it. Playing way too safe in this case in my opinion. You have a zillion ultimate to save you, plus anyone who challenges you should just get instantly rooted by you and die. 
Because remember, you have follow-up, right? So, okay, perfect. Good. Excellent. No hesitation. He, he, he EQs in. You hit him with the ultimate, and he's dead. Okay, that Alistar combo is not going to do anything. Just beat him to death. <clears throat> All right, and there's the Zillion ultimate. That's super helpful for you, too. At this point in time, you should just get the turret and start walking forward. Perfect. Kind of want to help your teammates, even though that's kind of their fault for basically killing themselves in that case. And the game should just be over. It's done. You just end the game now. How's this an extra 10 minutes? Oh, there must be something terrible that is about to happen. Cue, like, the Jaws music or something, right? All right. You're just cutting backwards, hitting whoever you have. You're doing a really good job of killing barrels, too, by the way. Mad props to you. At this point in time, just get the fuck out of there. Channel back. Reset. I like the Guardian Angel, actually. It makes you a lot tankier. Just let your teammates kill themselves. Just channel back. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't get involved. Just let them die. Let, let whoever died die. Okay, good. Alright. Just ping your teammates again. Just group top and then do it again. You know what I mean? Super easy. I'm going to kind of scroll past this since uh, I think most of the game is kind of done. Okay, so we'll talk about things that I, that you should look to improve on from this game. This is a great game. I like that you're actively killing barrels. It seems like your mechanics are reasonably well. Uh, Rewatch the early starts for like laning phase stuff because there were definitely ways for you to punish way harder and never die. But things that I want to talk, talk about outside of wave. Uh, what can I do and do they need help? Ask those questions quite frequently so you can make better decisions on whether or not you need to push or come help your teammates for neutral objectives because you lost a lot of fire and pressure on the map in that case. Uh, pay attention to your mini map before pressuring. Um, understand your team composition. In this game, you have lots of follow up to your route. So, like, if your route hits, someone will get chain CC'd if you're next to people and you have a zillion ult to operate with. Be a little bit more forceful, especially when we reference the middle. Um, another thing, too. Don't use your, like, outs, so we'll just use stopwatch, any escapes, flashes. Don't use those until you've seen the physical manifestation of the threat. We'll use the example, of, you know, EQ by Jarvan. Uh, don't want to use it until then to then actively dodge it, because you use, your, use those, like, not very optimally in a sense. Another thing, too, don't be too hasty with your ultimate sometimes, especially on champions like Alistar. If no one else is pressuring you and Alistair is just comboed in by himself, it's really easy for you to just sit there and beat on him. Because then, uh, a, a good reference to it is like Crescendo, right? If you're sitting there hitting the Alistar and no one's in range to follow up, anyone that walks forward has to worry about you ulting them and killing them, right? So then they're more apprehensive to fight, and in that case, you will be allowed to create more pressure. And if they just step forward, right, you just ult them and kill them. It's just free, you know what I mean? Like, people just walk into you and die. So those are... Those are reference points that I kind of wanted to touch on for this game. But it um, seems like your general mechanics are pretty good. Doesn't seem like in this game that you took too many risks in terms of, you know, that will get you killed. But in some cases, it's a little bit too risk averse and you're not pushing your advantage enough. So those are circumstances where I want you to kind of push your advantage a little bit better. Especially when you're given leverage like Zillion Ultimate. All right, so we've got another team fight happening. You're just hitting whoever's in front of you. I like this. Use heal a little bit too early, IMO. And we're just kind of cutting backwards. What the hell happened in this fight? Is this just like a 4v5? Yeah, okay, Zillion's timer is like way off of everyone else. So this is just like a dumb fight. All right, well, your Guardian Angel's 100% gone now. Kind of waiting out your respawn timer now. This is a game where I would have really, I really don't like the Blade of the Rune King. I would have actually much rather you got a Merc Scimitar, by the way, so that you couldn't get gold carded. Yeah, that is actually one thing. Why is Wits End good in this game? Uh, it's really good with, with Ginsu's. So Ginsu's every other attack causes you to proc on hit effects. That's why Blade of the Rune King and Ginsu's and like the passive and all that are just really, really good. Because then it procs magic damage, gives him gives his team magic pen. And actually, if you look at his whole team, all four of his teammates are actually magic damage dealers. 
So when Wits End's fully stacked on a player, it reduces their MR by like 25 or something. So it's actually su it's a super good item. It's a really good item. Also, at this point in time, Hurricane is useless to build. Usually get it early because it just gives you wave priority and pushing. So in this case, I don't really like the Hurricane. You should have 100% build a Phantom Dancer in this game. That way you can outduel pretty much anyone in this in this circumstance. Okay, so this game's kind of turned into a retard fest at this point in time. But all it really takes is you just team fighting well in one of the fights, and it should be pretty easy for you. You're doing a good job of clearing barrels, so hopefully we just keep looking for that. At this point in time, I'm going to kind of scroll through things until I find the next fight. I think the mid-game can be a little bit boring. Especially when you just kind of group mid. Um, thing to note, actually, is you guys should just be grouping bottom and getting this inhibitor back down before you even start pressuring mid. Since Baron isn't an option on your table, uh, you're not going to really be able to siege down an inhibitor turret outside of catching people. And your team comp doesn't dive very well either. Okay, so we've got a team fight kind of starting to happen. So you're just hitting whoever's in front of you. You are probably toast right here. Okay. So let's start. Let's tackle the team fight from the start, right? So the team fight starts erupting. The ultimate hits. At this point in time, you're just scooting back. Barrel hits you, which is actually the problem right here. And then you're actually ulting. So things to note your E in a lot of team fights is actually just a slowing agent. So. When this fight breaks out right here, what you should be doing, instead of Eing the Alistar, who's already used this combo and basically used everything, is you should actually be shooting your E over here and keeping the Jarvan out. Because your ultimate's actually not... Your ultimate is too late at this point in time, and if you use your E right here, you'd actually keep all of these players out. And you're also just playing way too far forward when you don't have Flash. Alright. I had a feeling some terrible things happened in this game. Oh, da, 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 da. All right, so there'll probably be like one more fight to break down, but this this fight will be good for you guys because you guys have you have flash. So okay. So the TF ulties in, and gold cards you. So first thing to tackle. He ulties in and gold cards you, right? This is really bad by you. So, remember what we're talking about. Your ultimate is a zoning tool and should be used to slow down and engage a lot of times. So, you have multiple people coming in from this location. You have a guardian angel. And TF is porting in right here, right? This is also why Blade of the Rune King is a really bad buy. Because if you have a Merc Scimitar, this, this play doesn't even make sense and it's just ending. So at this point in time, you should be using your ulti and your E to just zone out secondary engage. If someone comes in really deep and you just keep everyone else out, you can just kill that guy for free. He, he's just a free kill. So in this circumstance, you should be throwing out your ultimate and using your E to just slow down any engage. And not use your flash, by the way. You should not be using your flash in this circumstance. Because this flash doesn't really do anything for you. And actually just means that now you have no flash for when probably an EQ and an ultimate hits you. Like so. And now they're able to just pile on you the whole time. So this is a great, this is a great circumstance though. So for team fights and later in for future reference, use your E and your ultimate to just zone out follow-up engage. Zone out follow-up engage. If, if they're engaging on you, you just want to make sure that disruption is what's happening in the circumstances. Otherwise, you'll find yourself getting collapsed on by everyone at once. And then your ultimate your ultimate on a TF who has Zonia's that's on top of you already and gotten your flash is just meaningless. 